It's time for another edition of Coach's Corner with women's basketball coach, Matilda Mossman. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to Coach's Corner, final show of the season for head coach Matilda Mossman as the season is over. And uh, coach, a disappointing end uh, because you've done so well as the uh, underdog seed in this tournament. So often the 12 has beaten the five or the 11, the six, but unfortunately you weren't able to pull it off, although your team was really competitive. Yeah, I mean, we were playing Tulane for the third time, and then, you know, we felt like, we, we, you know, we lost that overtime game to them uh, at their place, and then we had a four-point game with them here, and, uh, you know, we felt like it would be hard for them to beat us three times, and we led early, had everything going, we were shooting the ball well in the first half, and then we just had a kind of a poor third quarter, and then they just really started going the offensive boards, and, and what had been good for us in the last two or three games, especially those two that we won over Temple and over Houston, it had been our transition game and we were getting out and scoring points in transition because we were not a very good shooting team. Well, initially Tulane was taking all of our tradition, uh, transition away from us and so we, we, we were scoring but we were struggling to score. And then, which means if they're getting back in, in transition, they're not going to the offensive boards as hard. So we got away with some things early. And then at the start of the second half, they just started crashing the offensive boards. Uh, they killed us with offensive rebounds, 13 second chance points. And they no longer worried about us going in transition. They were getting offensive rebounds and scoring, which by them scoring, that also took away our transition. But what a start for your team. 25-15, mm -hmm. nine of 12 from the field in the first quarter. Had to feel awfully good when that buzzer sounded at the end of one. Yeah, we had a, we had a, a uh, at least one uh, uh, possession where the shot clock went all the way down to one second and Addie Richards hit a, I mean, hurried a shot on the baseline that went in. And at that point, everybody's feeling pretty good about, about our chances because we're just finding ways to score. But then the offensive rebounds in the second half just killed us. Yeah, and the other thing you talk about that transition, a lot of that comes from uh, you know your guards digging at the ball and getting steals. You only forced 10 turnovers. You probably needed double that to really have a, a better chance to win, I'm sure. Yeah, and, and a lot of those turnovers were dead ball turnovers. Uh, Tulane was not a team coming in that took great care of the ball. Uh, we were so similar in so many ways, both of us struggling to score points, both of us struggling to hit a good percentage, both of us turning the ball over. Uh, but in the end, they just had more offensive weapons than we did. You know, Ursula Clark uh, had two of her best games out of the three against us. And uh, Crystal Freeman, first team all-conference, uh, you know, she was really good. Um, and then they've got uh, Kayla Manarangi, who uh, shot the three really well. Uh, Selma Bates starts off the game. She's a freshman uh, getting a start. Um, as a point guard, she hits a three right off the bat. So they just had so many weapons for us to try to keep up with. And who finished strong for you guys? Obviously, K.K. Rodriguez was 17, but you had four in double figures. We did. I mean, it was great. Uh, Kendra and Elliott had another double-double. Um, uh, K.K. certainly played well. Destiny Johnson was in double figures. Uh, in fact, four of our five starters were all in double figures. Addison Richards was in double figures. And, um, you know, through, uh, except for that bad third quarter where, <clears throat> excuse me, we didn't shoot it very well. Um, you know, we were, we were doing a lot of good things. Now, the first time in quite a while, I guess, since we've been in the American that you didn't at least win a first round game. I mean, that's, uh, there's some finality to that, I'm sure, and that's disappointing. Huh? It is, and there was one year in there where we got a bye even, mm. so we didn't even play a first round game. So, uh, yeah, disappointing, but I look back at, at the start of the season even, and we started out with kids in boots and kids with shin splints, and, and those kids continued to play all season long injured. We could just never get everybody healthy. And then we lose uh, Desiree Lewis. Uh, she sprains her big toe on December 5th, right before we leave, December 4th or 5th, right before we leave for Abilene Christian. And she's our, our, one of our best rebounders, and especially our best offensive rebounder. So she continued to play hurt all year long. All of a sudden, her minutes got cut in half. Uh, there were games that she could play, games that she couldn't. Um, it really hurt us not having her uh, really from December on uh, because, because of her rebounding prowess and her toughness. And she's a pretty tough kid. So for her to, to not be able to go, you know that foot was bothering her a lot. And then we look at uh, Lex Golden goes down with a high ankle sprain uh, against SMU on January 25th. So we're playing all those games without your point guard. So now you're without your point guard. You're without your four guy who's your, 
your best offensive rebounder. Uh, Rebecca Lasky had multiple injuries throughout the season. Uh, you know, she's in a boot. Um, Destiny Johnson started out the year uh, in a boot. Uh, Maddie Biddle played with shin splints all year long. Uh, it was just one thing after another. And, and you feel bad that those kids had to endure what they did. But for us to remain competitive despite all that, for us to win the last two games of the regular season and go in with, with at least some uh, the opportunity to go get a win, just really proud of, of that overall effort and, and what we had to fight through to get what we got. You mentioned Alexis Golden. She uh, played in the final home game for you and, uh, and you know only played a couple of minutes, but then she got three in the game against Tulane. But what a heartbreak for that young lady. She was co so close to 1,000 points for you, huh? Yeah, it's, it's, it's unfortunate. To, you know, she's been injured most of her career here with n battling knee issues and, and then the, the ankle sprain. So it's a uh, tough tough for her you know when we played her at senior night she had only practiced maybe once or twice so you know she had been gone without playing for five weeks so that that's tough and then even going into the conference tournament she's still not at 100 percent she's still not in back in a flow of playing basketball again so really really uh, tough to see that happen well ends up fourth place on your all-time three-pointer list for Alexis Golden but you have some others that that certainly did some nice things record-wise uh, Kendra and Elliott 15 double doubles in her career so many of them this year that's third best in history so there's some things to look back positively on some of these some of these numbers right? yeah, absolutely you know Kendra and um, was kind of an even though she had a great freshman and pretty good sophomore year she played behind Crystal Polk and missed half of her junior year. And so she was kind of an unknown coming into the comp coming into this year. And uh, I thought Kendra and really rose to the occasion. And especially with those uh, nine of her 15 double doubles were this year. Right. And, uh, you know, she was a consistent force for her for us uh, early in the year, had that 38 point game against um, Arkansas State. So, you know, she did everything that we could have asked uh, for from a senior. Yeah, almost 900 points in her career. And uh, so certainly a, a great way for her, uh, you know, to finish out as you look at, uh, at some of those numbers. And then you're going to miss your seniors always, right? Yeah, with the, those two that we just spoke about. And then um, Addie Richards, who uh, went to a different position there this year and embraced that position and I think ended up uh, being our second leading scorer. Mm -hmm. um, and we didn't score a lot of points, you know, 50, 57 points a game almost. And, and Addison was our second leading scorer at eight points a game and Kendrian was our top scorer. So just the, the, the fact that we couldn't get a lot going offensively this year was certainly a disappointment. But Addie certainly helped in, in what we did accomplish. Absolutely. So Tulsa finishes the season with a 67-61 loss to Tulane in the first round of the American Athletic Conference Tournament. In a moment, a look to the future when Coach's Corner continues. Be undeniable. We're back on Coach's Corner, and uh, Coach Mossman, obviously you say goodbye to the seniors, but there are some really bright lights ahead, if you will, for this uh, basketball program. And, and part of the positive, the unintended consequences of some of the injury situations is you had some young players really emerge. And I, and I think, first of all, about Destiny Johnson and K.K. Rodriguez as players that really helped this year and their future is bright. Yeah, they, you know, Des Destiny being a freshman and K.K. being a sophomore, they were put into the starting lineup uh, after that SMU game. So from the end of January through February in the conference tournament, those two kind of created a different buzz for our team, uh, created some different ways for us to score because uh, all year long we've been we had been trying to force let's let's attack attack. We're not a good shooting team. We have to we have to score in transition, but we just couldn't couldn't get there. And but those two created so many opportunities in transition for us and and uh, then they were able to you know shoot make some outside shots too which is helpful so you, you've got those two coming back uh, along with everybody else and then you add Matt, Maddie Washington who was our transfer from New Mexico who sat out this year practiced with us just wasn't eligible to play so now she's eligible and uh, she's that shooter that we missed all, all this year and then uh, we've got three freshmen coming in 
Uh, Jessica Evans from Norman, who is a four player who can shoot the three and can also score inside. Uh, Olivia Clayton, a 6'3 kid from uh, Shakota, uh, very mobile, can run the floor. She, you know, she'll be the first one down the floor as a post player. And then uh, McKenna Birch from Jenks High School. McKenna is a really good outside shooter. Uh, she's, that kid can, can really shoot the ball. Uh, we were fortunate to be able to get her. And then we, we, we have a, another commitment that we're, we look forward to having in here. And we're still recruiting. You know, we're, we're still looking for people who can come in and help us. And the most of it has to be, you know, we're, we weren't a very good rebounding team this year. We were last in the conference in rebounding and or toward the, la, toward the bottom. And so we got we to get better from a rebounding standpoint and we have to get better at shooting the ball. Because even though we got points in transition, we had to score at the rim because we really didn't have anybody that we could kick it out to and, shoot and make threes. So just, just looking forward to uh, those guys coming in and the guys that we had coming back, just them getting another year of experience and having the summer now, knowing what our, our, knowing what our needs are going to be and knowing what they need to do to help us to get better. Well, everybody takes a deep breath a little bit. I know you guys are working recruiting all the time, of course, and that, that work never ceases. But what do you expect from the young ones, the ones that are coming back next year in the off season? They've got to get ready for a new year. And, and, and that's almost a 12-month-a-year project now, isn't it? It is. They, they we have to work out year-round. I mean, the, the priority now is for us to get healthy. Uh, you know, they'll have this week off and spring break off. And then... When we come back from that, we have to assess where we are from an injury standpoint. And we're not going to make kids try to come back before they're healthy because that doesn't do us any good. So, you know, with the what 10 guys that we have coming back, um, maybe only seven of them can practice right. you know, in, in April. Uh, but we'll see. We're, we have to assess that after they've had a couple weeks off, see where they are and uh, get, get people healthy. But take the ones who are healthy and talk about, you know, their strengths and weaknesses. And we've got to make, we've got to continue for strengths to be strengths and we have to make our weaknesses a strength as well. All right, coach, have a great off season. Uh, thank you for all your help through the year. Thank you for the uh, backdrop in the set, Cafe Mossman here and, uh, and good luck. We'll talk to you again soon. Well, thank you and, and Daryl and Blake for everything and, and doing the coaches shows and it's been a pleasure. Head coach Matilda Mossman and that is Coach's Corner.